In this video, we'll show you how to quickly and easily create a dynamic animated sprite based main menu. To create our menu, we'll simply need our separated sprites, which we've created and included for you to download using the link in the description below. To begin, we'll open up a blank scene in Unity. Let's select all of our images, and within the inspector, under texture type, we want to change that from default to sprite 2D and UI, and then we want to click apply. We next want to find all of our images that have multiple sprites in one sheet, such as our title screen sprite sheet, our menu space 01, our menu space 02, and our menu sprite sheet 8-bit. With our images selected within the inspector, we want to change our sprite mode from single to multiple and then click apply. With our sprites now set to multiple, we need to go within the sprite editor and separate our sprites. However, in order to do this, we first need to add our 2D sprite package to our Unity project. To do this, we need to go to our Windows Package Manager. And within our package manager, we need to find and install our 2D sprite package. With our 2D sprite package now installed, let's select one of our sprites and go into our sprite editor. Within our sprite editor, we now need to define and separate each of the sprites within our texture by right clicking and dragging, which will define our sprite borders. We can also go to the top under the slice drop down, and with our type set to automatic, we can simply hit our slice button. We can now see that Unity has automatically separated the sprites within our sprite sheet. At this point, we can edit our sprite borders by selecting an edge and dragging. Change the pivot point of our sprite by selecting the circle in the middle of our sprite and dragging it to the position where we want the pivot point to be or using our sprite window in the lower right hand corner of our screen and clicking the pivot drop down to change our pivot points position. Within this window, we can also rename our sprite and adjust its position and borders. Once all the edits to our sprite are complete, we can then hit apply and close our sprite editor window. If we now look within the sprite we recently edited, we can see that we have each of our sprites, both separated and named. And our pivot point is now defined to where we set it to in the sprite sheet. With that complete, let's do this for the rest of the sprites and sprite sheets in our UI folder. Something to note, if we define our sprite either manually or by using Unity's automatic slice, by selecting the sprite's bounding box and hitting the delete key, we can remove the sprite bounding box from that sprite. Additionally, even after defining our sprite's bounding box, we can create a new one and select multiple sprites, even those with a bounding box, and we'll not only get those separated sprites, but also a sprite with all the different sprites within that bounding box. With that complete, let's begin creating our menu. We'll start by left clicking in our hierarchy and creating a UI image. Since this is our first UI element in our scene, doing this will create both a canvas and an event system game object. The event system is an easy way to send and receive events on Unity UI elements. It's a way of managing UI elements within our scene. To do this, our UI elements need to all be a child of our canvas game object so it can manage them. Let's start by first selecting our canvas, and we want to change our canvas render mode from screen space overlay to screen space camera. This way, when we introduce our Astro Galaxy game into our game room scene, our UI elements won't be overlaid of the entirety of our game room scene but will be displayed only through the Astro Galaxy camera. We want to now drag our main camera within the render camera value. 
and let's change our plane distance from 100 to 10. Our plane distance controls how far or close our UI canvas is to the camera. Let's now select our camera and change our projection from perspective to orthographic. Let's also scale down our camera size. And let's change our far clipping plane from 1000 to 11. And we also want to change our environment background type from skybox to solid color. For the time being, we'll simply leave our solid color as the default blue. However, once our objects are placed, we can change that color to a dark blue or black depending on our scene. With that complete, let's now select our image UI element. Since we want this image to work as our background, we want it to stretch the entirety of the canvas. To do this, we'll need to adjust our rec transform or use the anchor points in our scene to adjust our image. If we look within our scene view, we can see the anchor points of our UI image are simply in the center of our canvas. But we want both our anchor points and our UI image to stretch the entirety of our canvas. We can do this manually or by using our anchor presets. To display our anchor presets, we need to click our anchor preset icon at the top left of our rec transform. By holding the shift and alt button and clicking the anchor preset in the bottom right of our anchor preset window, we can set both the size and positioning of our anchor points and our image to stretch the entirety of our canvas. Additionally, by holding shift and selecting one of our anchor points, we can adjust both our anchor point and our sprite simultaneously. Let's next drag one of our sky background sprites in the source image of our UI image component. Let's also uncheck Raycast target and rename our game object to sky background UI image. Let's now duplicate our game object and we'll drag our background image ground plane into our new image component. And let's also rename our game object. Something to note, for those of you unfamiliar with working with UI elements, the UI elements render sorting order is determined by its position under the canvas parent game object. This simply means lower items in the group will appear before higher items in the group. If we look at our sprite sheet, we can see that our background ground image is fairly short and isn't meant to be as tall as our background sky image. So within our scene, our background ground image appears stretched and distorted. In order to fix this and ensure that any image is in the correct proportion of how it was created and appears within our sprite sheet, we can click our UI image element and check the preserve aspect ratio within our image component. We can now see that despite our anchor points, our image aspect ratio is correct to how it appears in our sprite sheet. If we hold shift and drag its anchor points, we can see that its proportions remain. We can also use this as a way of determining where the image anchor points need to be and then uncheck preserve aspect ratio and then further adjust our UI image size, position, or anchor points. With that in mind, let's use this knowledge and create and lay out the rest of our UI main menu image elements. Something to note, by holding Ctrl and Shift and selecting one of our UI elements anchor points, we can simultaneously move the image and its anchor points throughout our canvas. With our menu background created, let's create two new game objects under our canvas, one to store our menu background and the other to store all the elements of our main menu.
And before placing our objects into our two new game elements, we want to make sure that we have our anchor points for both objects on the edges of our canvas. Let's next add our logo sprite images to our canvas, but let's first create a empty UI game object to store our logo sprite images. And we also want to first ensure that the anchor points for our new logo parent game object is set to the edges of our canvas. With that complete, let's now add our buttons to our menu. We'll do this by first creating a parent empty UI game object that we'll call menu buttons. For our menu button game object, we're going to have our anchor points only cover the bottom fourth of our canvas. And to add a button, we can right click in our hierarchy and under UI, find and select button. When we add a button to our scene, we can see our button game object not only contains an image, but also has a text element. Our text element allows us to add text to our button, in which we can both change the size, font style, font, and line spacing. However, since the buttons in our menu element sprites already contain text, we can delete or hide the button's text game object. Unlike our UI images, our UI button contains a button component. Our button component works with our event system and already has our basic highlight and button press functionalities. It also allows us to easily change the color and actions of our button in certain states such as when it's idle, being highlighted, or being pressed. Let's change our button sprite to one of the sprites of our Astro Galaxy menu element sprite sheet. At this point, the basic setup of our menu is complete, so in our next lesson, we'll add our dynamic animated elements to our menu. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.